Hey kids, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that this was going to be the first of probably three videos on Adventuria Tears of Fire since the game takes a while to play. Uh, left a little bit of chatter in towards the beginning of this one. Uh, let Ron really talk up the game because showcasing it is what we're all about here. Um, also, I tried to clean up the audio as best I could, but as we were in a live gaming hall, having other games played very close next to us, well, I could have done better getting audio levels, and hope to next time I do this. Anyway, with that knowledge, enjoy. There, well, yes and no. There's, so there's uh, six elements to the dragon. Right. Um, correct. We don't roll for you. Just, you just shuffle them and grab them. Oh, you so so <laughs> Right. Um, and then once you do that, then you go through the whole deck, pick out the whole thing, and you use that, and you can push the I Correct, know. yes. Um, but there are, there are two know. versions of it. So one version okay. is Okay, well that's what I said. You want to do that's that. And the other version is what we're doing here. We, I won't use the it, it changes depending on which version of it. That's just weird. Tools or adventure. It doesn't change a lot, but it changes significantly enough that it feels different as the dragon player. And actually, I ran both, and I kind of like the new version of the better. Because I get to use the deck. Right now. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's I gotta brag about this for a quick second. I got to meet Eric Lane yesterday. I don't know if you guys know who that is. So he's like one of the premier board game designers. Oh, and uh, I had him not design. I not designed, so I went over there. and He was doing an interview over at Simon, you know, and I just took out my game, and he recognized the artwork right away. He goes, he looked at me, goes, "What is in the middle of the interview? Goes, what is that?" I go, "This is I've been tripping over that, you know, this might be signing." He goes, "I recognize that artwork because that's from the Dark Knight." I go, "Yeah." He goes, "I used to play the German version of that 20 years ago. I love that game." I was like, "Damn, come on." <laughs> Really awesome. He's a really super nice guy. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, I saw this in my local name shop the other week. Man, this is awesome. Uh, it really is. Oh, it's uh, awesome. Is it it's, 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 it's probably the first thing you can do. All in one box. Really? Yeah. So if you're like a CCG, like that. Okay, this is the same thing. If you're a role player, if you're a co op player, It's got a lot going on. That's a great game. Awesome. Is it? Is it? Here? It is. Uh, booth 423. Uh, tell them. Yep. And they'll hook you up. I think Eric will be over there. Um, they should have. I think we've got a couple of people that are going to lie. I sold quite a bit of them over the weekend. I think we got around 10 people. The last I heard when I was this morning, it had like 9 or 10 people. They may be. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, you guys too. Alright guys, we're gonna stop talking and start the game. I'm sorry. No, you don't actually need a game master. No, that's one of the great things about this. Um, for of course in these situations I like to do it as fun. But you can play this solo and just simply follow the directions of the game. Set it up and play it all by yourself against the game. You can do a co-op against the game. You do have to have someone to just set it up. Whoever owns the game usually will do that, like most games. But otherwise, you don't really need to have a GM. There's not a lot of role play in this, but as a GM or someone running the game, you can make it as little or as much role play as you want. I don't tend to lean towards that. I tend to lean towards gameplay. That's just, just me. And making the interactions more fun for the player. I tend to lean towards also making sure that the player's have a good time. You know, I, you know, if you're having a good time playing the game, if you want to role play it, by all means, go right ahead. Right. You see what I did this guy? You see what I did? All right, guys. The first decision you guys have to make is we have four versions of this giant white room. There is going to be the adolescent version of the giant white room. The young version of the giant white room. 
the adult version of the giant wyvern so, and the ancient version of the giant wyvern. I don't think we should go ancient. I recommend you guys go with the adolescent version to give thinking. yourself the best opportunity to succeed. You do not have to take my recommendation, but that's my recommendation. I, I heard we probably won't win even on that. So. You might. Well, it scales. So keep in mind, all of these scenarios that we play, including this one, scale up and scale down on the difficulty for the number of players and also in the adventure mode it scales up or down based on your level of skill so there's easy normal difficult and legendary in this the easy normal difficult legendary is based on the age group of the dragon so adolescent young adult ancient so i recommend adolescent but i'll let you guys decide well, let's yourselves. not get cocky <laughs> i defer to the group we want we want that dragon slayer title don't we yeah i i tell you what guys if you guys get the dragon slayer i'll get you into the tournament tomorrow uh, at I'm two o'clock today for free so so I'm yeah in there myself already all right so. good all right good deal so you guys are going to be playing the giant wyvern so what's going to happen is, is there's going to be a few things we're going to do. I got to do one, one or two quick little set of things, and we're going to get you going, all right? Because uh, I did a lot of talking and not a lot of this. <laughs> I was a new starting hand. So you guys go ahead and shuffle up your deck. You can draw your five cards. Go ahead and read them. I should have told you that five minutes ago. And then on your turn, you'll draw two cards at the beginning of your turn, but we'll get there. So what I'm going to do right now, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and draw three random heads for you guys to fight. Okay? This is a giant vibrant, so it's a three-headed fight. You don't want fire, you really don't want water either. Because water is really good at healing. Um, it's bad. Uh, yeah, humus, humus, which is earth, uh, air, and, uh, so are they good? yeah, heart. And then there weren't any ships left for the Uh, I don't remember now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is going to be a card that we're going to need to pass around. Uh, this is going to be called the Fellowship <laughs> of Dragon Hunter. This is what you guys are. Okay? You guys are the Fellowship of Dragon Hunter. And this card says, as a hero action, you fight the dragon. Every hero at a max of once per turn can spend it endurance, and don't worry, I'll explain what all this means, uh, to do a craft roll. Now, if you look at your characters, you're going to see two cards. One's going to have a set of skills on it with numbers. There's going to be a craft on that set of skills. If you don't see that, let me know. But that craft will have a number. When you do a roll in Aventuria, it's always a d20 equal to or less than the number you're trying to hit. So it's it's the opposite. So if you're like me and you're a bad dice roller, this is great for you because I roll ones like crazy. Ones are, ones are critical successes, 20s are critical failures. If at any point you roll a critical success, you get to draw an extra card from your deck. At any point you roll a critical failure, you discard a card at random from your hand. And so I'll do that for you, just so that way you, and then keep in mind, these are, you guys are all a team. Okay. So if you do a craft roll on this card and you succeed in that roll by equaling your craft less than or equal to, you'll place a counter on this card. And what it says is during combat, the following applies. After a failed attack against the dragon, head or a failed roll on a hero action, so it could be a test or a check or a skill, uh, tier of dragon, you may improve the die result of that roll by two by removing one of these tokens. Okay? So that's very, so every time you make a craft roll in the adventure, you're going to add more tokens to this. And then once you get to the fight, there'll be a certain amount of tokens. Then when you're fighting the dragon, you can roll, and if you miss barely, take a token off here, but you still have to do the spend the one, make the craft roll to do it. And then you can uh, improve your roll and then be able to hit the dragon or do whatever you're trying to succeed in doing. All right? Cool. That's kind of neat. Yeah. All right, so. We're going to randomly pick one, two, three. Those are the three heads we are going to pick. And we have. Let's do this. That's fire and water. We have the Hell Skillet. 
We have Stormbringer. <laughs> and we have Lavatar. Those are the three heads. Yep. So we have fire, air, and ore, which is the other earth one we couldn't oh, think of. Yeah. Yep. And so what I'm going to do now that I have the three elements is I'm going to go through two decks, separate the elements because there's six in total, make those decks, and then we can get started in the event. Sound good? Yeah, yeah. If you could stop right I'm sorry. <laughs> Adolescent is as low as it gets, unfortunately. Yeah. No exceptions for that. Absolutely. I want to make sure we get that well, done. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You may not be at 40 by 10 to get to the dragon, but you start at 40. Let me reiterate. Last time I made it. Yeah, so basically this helps you keep track of how many hit points you lost. Well, we don't know, and I, I'm pleased. Believe me, guys. Let's see you coming. No, uh, no. Life, your life points are your dial. Endurance is what you're going to use to play for a So the, the top left corner of your card, still you'll see a circle with a number. Okay? Um, I'll explain all that once I set up, but basically that's the amount of endurance you'll need to spend to play those cards. All 100%. I'm sorry? Endurance is your friend. Endurance is your friend. Yes, endurance is your friend. Uh, we are going to play the time scale on easy, okay. guys. So we're going to do the adolescent dragon and the time scale on easy. All right. So the time scale on easy says you're going to have nine rounds. To do this. Plenty of time to get spent. So what will happen is at the end of your guys' turn, after all of you go one time, I'll do my actions and then I'll take a time counter off this card. Now, the on easy, I have nine. I start with nine. After there's seven left, something's going to happen. I'm going to draw a leader action card, and it's usually going to be bad for you guys. On six, I'm going to draw a number of henchmen out of the henchmen deck that is associated with this particular expansion, equal to the threat value of the number of heroes. Don't worry, I'll explain that when we get to that point. I just want to let you know that's going to happen. At four, I'll draw another leader action card, and at zero, it's kind of the coup de grace. It's like, hurry up and kill me or you're probably in trouble. I'm gonna draw a leader action card and then every head performs one additional action during that round. Yeah. And so by the end, so how you guys win is by defeating all three heads at the same time. Not You don't have to kill them at the same time, but they all have to be defeated simultaneously by the, end of the by the end of it, okay? So, and yes, they do have the ability to resurrect. <sighs> so, like a Hydra, if you chop a head off, it does have the capability of regrowing. And if it regrows, it regrow too. if it regrows, it goes back to full health. Oh. So, you have to do it quickly. And I hate so to say it, but that's the way it is. Maybe a good thing to... It's tough. It's very difficult. Start little taking little them down, down a little bit of the... Little 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 yeah. And then all of a sudden... And that's, and that's, a good, that's a really good strategy. So the good thing is, is that we don't have water, so healing isn't going to be super prevalent. That's a plus for you guys. Yes. Um, you actually got a fairly good draw on the dragon heads. You didn't get fire and you didn't get water. And you did, and so those two are really, fire is the damage guy and water is the healing guy. They're all going to do a lot, but those two are the worst ones. Are they all immune right. to any of our attacks in any way or shape or form? Um, we'll get to that. That's a good question. We'll get to that. Yeah, because they will fire is, me. It, they, the answer is, is they have a, they're hard to hit and they're hard to kill. So yes. Um, so how we do this basically is, if any one of you guys gets defeated, you're going to get a skull token. But if you get defeated, you're not out. You have I don't know if you guys are familiar, but they have a uh, reinvigorate ability where. One of you, and I know you guys are going to say this, but I'm going to, I have to tell you real quick. You can spend X amount of endurance, which is cards. You, you can exhaust them that you've laid down, and I'll explain how that works. Roll a d20. If that d20 is equal to or less than the number of endurance you spent, you can reinvigorate a defeated hero back up to that amount of endurance. So, for example, if you had six endurance, you have tapped all six, you rolled a d20, you rolled a six or less, you can bring and stand that person back up and he starts at six health. Now keep in mind, that is their only thing they can do for that combat round is standing up. Very thematic with our, most RPGs. So stand they, up and get whacked back down again. Probably. 
but you know. Unless it's like the dwarf here with massive amounts of armor. Exactly, exactly. I actually went with the. So at this point, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put. We're, to this is actually them. not really going to be in play. This is more for a graphics. This would come into play if we were doing the dual mode. These three heads are really what you're going to be fighting right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the health tokens so you know how much health they have, so you know how, how to defeat them. So these guys all get eight times health equal to the number of players. So we have six players, so they're all going to have 48 health if my math is good. So there's 40, 40, and 40. Oh, yeah, it's got a lot of offense. It takes a little bit to build up. Once you do, you start whacking the shit out of stuff. Oh, my gosh. Plus, you're also very defensive. All right, fine. I'm switching up the wall. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, if we have nine rounds to build this shit up, I just remember the last combat was a bit quicker, and so the dwarf taking a little bit of time okay. to build up wasn't able to hit his full stride in time. So what I'm going to do for you guys, because I realize you're new, okay, is that when it's your turn, I'm going to come around, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to help you, I'm going to walk you through the steps. Once you do it once or twice, I promise you, it'll be like riding a bike. It's not that difficult. The biggest thing, in my opinion, is knowing what cards to put down for endurance, because you don't know what cards are good or not, okay? It's effectively discarding. You don't get to use the cards for endurance, correct? Correct, that's right. So you're basically going to be taking... On your turn, zero, one, or up to two cards out of your hand, putting them face down, okay? And then you will exhaust them, or tap them, I can't say it too loud. Exhaust them <laughs> to spend endurance to play cards from your hand. Which is equal to that off the upper left hand corner, corner that we have. Right. Now, we'll get to that. There are going to be a couple different types of cards as well. So, are you guys ready to play? I think I'm ready, and I'm sorry it took so long. I think I'm pretty ready to go here. So, we're going to go ahead and do the adventure. So, who would like to roll 1d6 to determine the path? We'll run ahead. Five. Okay. So, in this adventure, you roll a d6. One and two gives you the Elder path. Three and four give you the Dragon War path. Five or six give you the Merchant Trek path. So, we're going to go to the Merchant Trek path. And I'm going to read this. All right. You guys all ready? Yep. Riva, the year is 1039 BF. The merchant Panic has hired you in Riva to accompany the first merchant's trek of the year. When the long winter comes to an end, to the minstrel festival of Norbury. Panic hopes that Fex, the god of merchants, will be well disposed towards him, so he might sell a couple of valuable musical instruments made by Vidari. You travel to Riva on a narrow road towards the east. Now, at this point, I'd like everybody to take their D20 and look at their craft number. And go ahead and roll it and try to roll that equal to or less than. And just, yep, perfect. And just keep it in front of you. And I'll go around and ask it who has succeeded and who has not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and remind me your name again. Andy. Andy? I'm wrong. I and I, I might ask you guys your name, and I apologize. So, Andy, did you succeed? No. Okay, you did, was it just a regular failure? Yeah. Okay, so the strenuous activity makes you lose to... Wow. All right, and what's your name again? Mike. Mike, okay. Go ahead, what did you do? I did Great, so on a succeed, due, the, due to the melting snow, the streams and rivers have crossed the banks, and time and again, Heart gets stuck in the mud and needs to be free. You routinely do your work. All right, and what's your name again? Gary? Gary, okay, very good. Did you succeed? Critical failure, okay. Uh, so, uh, a cartwheel breaks and the cart crushes your foot. Please roll a 1d6 for damage. Take three damage, please. All right, Morris. Yeah. Well, that's pretty close. <laughs> so the strenuous activity makes you lose two health. So go ahead and lose two health. Okay, good. So due to the melting snow, the streams and rivers across the banks, and time and again you get stuck in the mud. You need to be free, and you routinely do your work. All right, Mike. Regular failure. Regular failure. So it's going to be a strenuous activity, and you're going to lose two health. So go ahead and do that. 
Two. All right. Two. All right. Two. Time. Oh, had a great start. We haven't even started yet, and we're already taking damage. It's pretty good. All right. We're All right. A cart up the hill. Dang That's it. right. Yep. You guys are doing a good job. All right. After a short stop in Gerasium, where elves and humans live in harmony and train young mages at the school of the direct way, the paths lead you into the mountains past the yellow sickle. The road becomes more difficult and you have to clear it from fallen trees that fell over into the winter storms. Please, everybody, make me a survival roll on your d20. Oh, that is not good. All right, Andy, fail. Fail, okay. Due to the exhausting journey, you're going to lose two health. All right, and... Success, Mike. Mike, yep. Uh, success. The yellow sickle cannot... Frighten you. All right. Carry. Failure. Failure. All right. <laughs> Do the exhausting journey. You lose two lives. Morris. Your die is repeating itself, and I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. You lose two health. Uh, no. Two 19 in a row. Uh, eight. eight regular success. Okay, the yellow circle cannot be frightened. Mike. I take the two. Okay, take the two. Very good. <laughs> Very simple. All right. The road's gonna kill us before the dragon. Yeah. It, I tell you, I mean, the world was, of the the world of the dark eye is not an easy one, gentlemen. It is brutal and it is rugged. We played one of these card games. It was just a standard adventure path. We had events like this. The dude who was running it last year told us it's like okay, roll to, for a body control check because the river is swelling, and if you can't make the check, your weapons will be swept away. I'm like, you're bullshitting me. <laughs> we played uh, Seeds Across the Valley, right? Yeah. Uh, last night. Last night. Am I, am I confused, Craig? Is that the one where the squirrel bit off my nipple? Yes. Yep. I mean, that could be construed in a few different ways, Doug. I don't know. Literal. Woodland squirrel tried to bite off my nipples. So a good day. <laughs> yeah, so it was a great day. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. It's like a Tuesday. <laughs> it's, it's a normal Tuesday, no big whoop. Uh, you cross the yellow sickle and come to a country inn with a wooded palisade. The inn has a stable with a barn that is large enough to house your carriages and draft animals. While you can have a good meat soup with lots of herbs and a round of beers. All of a sudden, a three-headed dragon breaks through the roof and grabs your friend and companion, Panic. Chaos ensues. The people react in panic. The roof threatens to collapse and the fire breaks out. Everybody, please roll a body control check. This doesn't look good. Come on, I gotta roll good, guys. Roll good, please. Uh, critical success. Are you serious? Yeah. Nice. That's going to help. All right. All right, so critical success. You get yourself to safety and also help extinguish the fire. The crowd is celebrating as you are the hero of the day. You get a fate point. Woo! That is going to come in really handy. Dang, All right, man. Mike, what did you do, sir? Regular success. Good. All right. So, so nothing great, nothing bad. All right. You managed. Yep. You managed to get yourself to safety. All right, Terry. Regular success. You managed to get yourself to safety. Regular success. Same thing, Doug. Okay. You're hitting by fallen debris and you lose one health, Mike. Okay, well, of course. Same thing. You lose yeah. one health. All wow, right. I'm running. I've already lost five health. Yes. This is not voting well. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm the glass cannon here. Thank yes, you. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You see the beast disappearing in the horizon with Tanek and swear that you will free the merchant, who you have grown very fond of over the past few days. Are we sure we don't want to just cut our losses, guys? <laughs> From the cartload, you grab some useful equipment before you go after the dragon. So at this point, I'd like each hero... Uh, can draw three cards from the reward card pile and choose one of them, and I will hand those out. Um, you get to shuffle those at, into your action pile, and then you may also choose not to take a card to receive an additional fate point, okay? So let me grab those real fast for you. Uh, fate point for I'll take a fate point on us. Well, yes. Yeah. Work, I mean, what will happen no, is you'll get to look at three and you'll get to get one. We can walk. Can we look? Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Absolutely. What Absolutely. type of things are in the reward deck? We're trying to... Okay. Okay. So far, nice has been good to me, but maybe I need a fate point. What type of things are in the reward deck? Like, You're going to get to see. Oh, okay. We're going to see. Okay. You're going to get to pick three cards. Another thing, I'm doing cameras, I can't right. remember what it would say. You can spend fate points on other people. Okay. Okay. So it's like right. so you failed group, yours, it's like I've got a face point. Now no, give it mind, another try. There's going to be weapons, skills, abilities, um, potions, 
you know, all kinds of stuff. So and go ahead and pick three, and then, and, and, three <laughs> and then just hold on to them. Uh, same thing. Right. You want to pick three out of the reward, please? All right, Carrie, I'm going to reach over here. If you can grab three for me, that'd be great. That'd be great. I think I know what I need. Okay, let me make sure I don't get these mixed up. Because okay, there we three go. endurance is always good. Oh, absolutely. Three for you. So let's shuffle the one we want into our pile. Uh, yeah, go ahead and shuffle that into your deck if you find you want, and then you can just turn the other ones face up if you want to. So that way everybody can kind of see what you had. So what I'm going to do, actually, before, did you shuffle that in there? Yes. Grab it up real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you guys, this is going to be a little GM favor here. I'm going to allow you guys to look at all of them. And I'm going to allow you guys to decide which cards you think would be best for your character classes. And if you want to pick that single card for your deck for that character class, I'll let you do it. Because you guys are going to need all the help you can get. Okay? So everybody can look at all the cards. If you see something that you know is going to be extremely good for the mage or etc., and I'll help, I'll help you guys, of course. Yeah. Is there a protection from dragons? Is that in there? There's a pretty gnarly spiked club if we've got any uh, melee characters. Yeah, so tear drops your health. Take this, though, oh, okay. yeah, that just represents your health. Um, this little square with this thing just represents that you're exhausting that card. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. This little circle with the two is the same circle would be up here. That's an endurance cost or gain. So this says if you pay one to play this card, it's a belt. You're putting the belt on, then you're going to exhaust this card to gain plus two endurance until the end of the turn, and then make a dodge check, which is this number right here. Okay? It's a d20, yep. It's difficult. It's that or under, yep. And if it fails, you lose three health. So what it's what it's saying is you're trading off health for endurance, but you still have a chance to mitigate that health. And there are going to be cards in here that can mitigate that and raise that number. Not tremendously, but a little bit. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then, so this is the same thing. You're going to spend the one to do this, um, and then this thing's going to trigger. You're going to spend two to do this, and then you're going to raise the damage of your magical attacks, and this is your magical number to hit by two. So you play this, and it's a talisman, and every time you make a successful hit, and then you roll your d6 for damage, this increases that damage by two every time. Does that make sense? Okay. And then that, so that's this an equipment. one doesn't exhaust. That just... No, no. This one just is like a, it's something you're holding in your hand. It's, it's actually an equipment. So it's a talisman because you're a druid. Or, or you know, it could be for another uh, mage class or uh, anything that uses uh, magic, really, to be honest. So, okay. We have a lot of talents in um, So, guys, while I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and break down the cards for you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so X equals the amount of endurance that you spend. So if you spend one endurance, X equals one, and then X equals one. Ten endurance, ten and ten. That's simple. As soon as you open the door. So real quick, I got since I'm over here, I'm gonna kinda of break down this first. So uh, this is your here. You have four basic numbers on a D20 that you're gonna roll. This is your dodge number, so anytime you get attacked by you see fire on Always get to roll a good one to dodge. If you see that you can dodge, you take a lot of damage from the dodge. And I do the same if I have a dodge. You'll never get to this place. You have a basic weapon, which everybody does. Yours is the range. Yours is the range. Yours is the magic. Then you will always be able to spend one endurance. One endurance to exhaust cars to do a basic attack. And you're always going to roll the number that is associated with the type of attack you have. So, for example, if your magic is your number 13, the range is your 12, the range is your 15. Now, you can do multiple attacks, but they have to be of different types. So, for example, if you have a number of attacks, you're going to have parts of your deck that are going to allow you to do a bit more and then you can pull like a bow or a sword. Then you're going to be able to also do some other attack. So you can potentially have three attacks three attacks later on in the game. Okay? And most of those weapons are going to do some damage as well. You're going to want to try to get to those a a ASAP heroes because you need to do a lot of damage to this track. Does that all make sense? Pretty simple. So you already drew your five cards. So another thing I want to show you too is those who are Okay. Well, what I want to show you is, so you see how there is a white inside border with a black card versus this card that has a black inside border with a white The reason why those are different 
is because this is a one shot opportunity. So you play this one time and then it goes away, it gets discarded. Whereas you play this, it stays in play because it's got that inside black border and then that's got that inside red border. Does that make sense? So this is a one time use, it goes away. This is a permanent, unless a card or an ability does something, it stays in play. All right? And then also one other thing I want to mention, Mike, you have a special card in your hand. And if you guys want to play your hands face up, I'm more than happy to help you. This is actually a free action card. Okay? What that basically says is in an adventure, and that's the part you're going to read, you can play this at any time. It does not have to be on your turn. Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're just going to do the what it says in the adventure part. But as long as you, as long as you have one endurance to do it, you can do it at any time. Your turn or anybody else's. Okay? Okay. Any other questions so far? Carrie, do you have any questions, sir? All right, is everybody happy with what we got? Have you guys all? So, you guys want to. Did you guys all pick a car here? Over here on their side? Okay, so are you guys. Did you guys look at what they had over here? I've allowed you to pick from the whole pool. Okay. Yeah. Heal four damage. I don't know if anyone is looking like I don't think I have any good options, but I think this is a good option. I think that's a great option, actually. So one thing I do want to mention is is that we are doing the adventure. Oh, so okay. it says in an adventure as above. It says an unconscious hero cannot be brought back into play from this card. And the reason why that is is because a hero has to be resurrected or reinvigorated by a minimum of five hit points. And so this only does four, so you cannot use that card specifically to do that. So here's, here's another card. That one will work to reinvigorate if someone was knocked out, you can use that. And that's a great card as well. It's a one-time shot thing though. Yeah. However, uh, I don't know about your decks. I'm playing the dwarf. He takes a lot of ult to start getting moving. Yeah. I chose this card because it lets. Or wait, is that the same card? There are multiples of the same card in this. So yes, yeah. the oh, these are different. They, they're different. They're different. Oh, uh, sorry. No, that's okay. The endurance card of it. Oh, I don't know what those are. I took. Uh, I took this one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do guys I'm gonna let you two if you don't mind help these guys pick us because you guys are a team and I want you to work as a team. I'm more than happy to make a, a you know suggestions, but I want you guys to kind of talk to each other. These guys are pretty extreme. This card here I think is really great as well. Um, this card is really damage. No, this card is amazing. I, I wore this my favorite card. Came out of the dragon. It's it's like if you're a magic player, it's basically one. That's what it is. It is the black lotus of this game, and I love it. I think that's a good It's very powerful. Yeah. So Andy's basically taking the quote unquote black lotus of the game and putting it in his deck. You may not want to record that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a really great card. All right, so Andy's got his pick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, they sure do. They got it. That's exactly right. You get to accumulate endurance and you can building up your endurance. So you're doing power and you're doing power. Absolutely. Kill the man scorpion. Those things are really good. I'm, I'm ready when you guys are. Just let me know. Right? Is everybody uh, happy for picks? So I can put. I'm sorry. I said kill the pants for me. That's one shot through. Yeah, but you can't lose if you run out of cards. And trust me, that won't happen. I've never, I've never seen that happen. Maybe once, once in a duel, I've ever seen that happen. It, and by that time, you'll have so much endurance and so much stuff in play, it won't matter. All right. So, everybody happy? We're all good. I can read the next section. All right, good. Oh, you got a rope. Oh, you got a rope. So, at that point, each hero draws right. three cards from the reward pile. Two or four. Then each hero makes a willpower <laughs> roll. So, as soon as you guys done picking the next one, I do willpower. And I'm going to go around the horn like I've been doing. Uh, All right, the new system you choose is the skill. It's five hit points. All right, Ian. Fail, okay. Uh, you feel that Destiny has chosen you to fight this dragon. 
whether you will survive this encounter, you are not sure. Mike. Regular success. All right. A giant wyvern, anything but a simple opponent, but you feel that you have chosen to defeat the beast. Place two counters on the Fellowship of the Dragon Hunters card. So that is good news. So, we're going to add two counters to that. That's a good thing. All right, carry. Real, yeah, okay. So, yeah, same thing. Uh, you've chosen to fight the dragon. Uh, whether you survive or not, you're not sure. Morris. Regular success. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and add two more counters. That's good. All right, Doug. No. Nope. Fail? Yep. Just a regular fail, and Mike? Regular fail. Okay, all right, so you got four counters on there. That's fine. All right. I'm, my that, dice are not cooperating. Well, here. We'll switch dice. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I gave you mine. Now we all roll back to the dragon. How's that sound? Yeah. All right. It never works out. Unless it's a turn code dice, it'll start <laughs> doing a good. You're now. absolutely right. All right. You guys follow the dragon across the green plain and meet a group of steep elves who have seen the beast in their dreams, as well as a fat man. He had a more direct encounter with the beast as you find him hurt and hanging in the crown of a tree. As you approach the confluence of Born and Asp, the traces of the beast become more and more apparent. You are very close to your goal now. So at this point, I'm going to continue to fight the dragon at page 15, which is the last page. And now I get to read some more flavor text, and then I promise we'll get to fight the dragon. So, no, so since we did the adventure mode, you kind of go through the trials and tribulations of getting there. And based on that earlier D6, there were three different ways to get there. So this was the merchant's trek to get there. All right. Sorry, guys. Yeah. No, actually, the merchant's trek is actually the better for loot, believe it or not. So, although the I, that's the only one I've done, I've read them all, and they're all good, but I think the merchant's one's probably the best. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions. Hey kids, I hope you're ready for the next segment because we'll be fighting the dragon then. And I didn't really realize that we were going to be fighting a dragon with three heads. Anyway, you can email Mike and tell him how screwed you think he'll be in the next couple episodes by hitting up Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. I mean, technically it's a wyvern, but still, I, I didn't know what I was getting into in this situation. Like, uh, well, maybe elemental abilities should have been something I expected, but not three different ones. I mean, who the hell does that? That's like a Japanese vampire versus a European. It's got all these weird superpowers that the other one doesn't have, and it's just way more disgusting in general. Whoa.